responsibility, the what, the why, and the how. Um, the session will be presented by Bronwyn Hayden. Um, for those of you who are PPO clients, I'm sure you're all familiar with Bron. She um, is our implementation consultant as well as a wonderful trainer, and she's going to be sharing um, some key principles around data quality, what it is, how you measure it, and sharing some case studies on different examples of what, what our clients are doing around data quality. Um, so not just the basics, some um, insight into what you can do with data quality and taking it to the next level. So she's got some of that to share with you. Um, and the session will be supported by myself and Lindy. So the chat is available for everyone to um, ask questions. We'll be posting some useful resources based on some of the topics that Bron shares. Um, and of course, we'll share those with you after the session. The session is being recorded, so it's not necessary for you to hurry and try and take down notes. We will share the recording with everyone who's attended as well as registered and were unable to make it. So you will get that post the session. Um, so Lindy and I are there for any questions you have. Um, we'll respond to you in the chat. And if any of your um, questions are a little bit more detailed, we'll probably take it with, off, offline um, and respond there. Um, and then that's it, Bron. I am going to hand over to you. Um, the session is probably about a 40 to 45 minute presentation, and we've allowed for 15 minutes questions at the end. But don't worry, you don't have to wait for the end to ask your questions. We'll we'll take them on the side. OK, okay. so I'll just stop share, um, Bron, and you can okay. take over. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. I must be honest, when um, Guy approached me to do a webinar and he asked if I'd like to do data quality, I thought, well, that's a good idea because I might have to get my mother and my sister to join the webinar to make up the numbers. I thought, I don't know that anyone wants to hear about data quality. And boy, was I wrong. So I'm really actually pleased to see so many of you coming um, because there's exciting stuff to talk around data quality. It's ju not just that one little rag on the project. I promise you we wouldn't put you through 45 minutes speaking about one rag. So we do have some some interesting stuff to share with you. We are going to cover the basics, um, but then we are going to show you how um, you can possibly take your data quality a little bit further. Let's give me a second to share my screen. Alrighty. <clears throat> okay. So we've structured this uh, webinar into the what, the why, and the how of data quality. So first we want to get to the grips of, well, what is data quality? Um, at the end of the day, data quality is about ensuring that the information in PPO is accurate and up to date. That's the base. Um, we want to make sure that, uh, you know, the uh, PMO can trust that their reporting is going to be um, thorough, that it's uh, going to be regularly done. It's also a tool for the project manager, however, to consistently manage their project professionally and according to the SLA set out by the PMO. Um, so in PPO, as I just mentioned, we do have that one little data quality rag that sits on your project that I'm sure you're all familiar with. And um, this is fed by whether the comments are updated and the health indicators are all updated. And we're going to go into a little bit more detail around this basic rag and the comments and health indicators. But, you know, I always find um, when we understand why we do something it's a little bit better it's a little bit easier to to understand the what and the how so let's get talking to the why um why do we do uh, data quality so if we think about it a key service of any project environment is to provide real-time credible and quality status reports for information and decision making if you think about it, we can't go making decisions around projects if we're basing it on out of date and inaccurate information. Um, 
you know, this is where it's really important in keeping your stakeholders engaged and then also making sure that the PMO is seen as a credible sense of excellence. OK, so let's take another step backwards. Why do we do status reporting? So we know now that we need data quality to ensure the quality of our status reports, but why are we actually doing status reporting? So, I mean, this is a vital governance practice for any project, um, you know, keeping your sponsors and your owners engaged. Um, you know, a single document like the project status dashboard, you know, can facilitate decision making. Um, it can facilitate problem solving and, you know, it can help uh, your team, uh, your stakeholders help you move the project along in a positive environment. But I think it's vital to keep in mind that if we want this document to do all of that, our information has to be relevant. It has to be accurate. We want it well articulated. Um, we want it organized. We want it done in a standardized manner so that our stakeholders learn to um, expect the information in a certain professional format. Um, and also, very importantly, that the timing is regular. So PPO has a concept that we like to um, get um, socialized with our clients, and that's what we call the reporting heartbeat. OK, so what is a heartbeat? A heartbeat is something that's consistent. Um, it beats to a certain rhythm within a certain timing. And that's a really healthy heart, right? So we want a healthy heartbeat for our reporting. And if we look at this example of a reporting heartbeat, we can see that, for example, our project dashboards are expected every single week. There are other uh, reports, some portfolio reports that might be only be expected once a month. But it's all about that consistency. We want our stakeholders, our executives to know all right, fine, on a Thursday afternoon before close of business, I'm going to get my project status dashboard in my mailbox. Um, we want to know that on the second Friday of the month, the Steerco reporting is going to be uh, submitted. So I think then it's safe to say if we have that reporting heartbeat of seven days, we then, um, you know, expect that the data is going to be updated every seven days, that it's going to, you know, be fresh and relevant. All right, so if you think about this, once our project um, information is up to date and accurate, and we've updated our health indicators, our comments, our project plan, etc., we can then be sure that our portfolio reporting is going to be up to date and accurate. So if we get it right on the project level, we then get it right on the portfolio level. Um, you know, we want our PMO to be able to generate dashboards out of PPO that are relevant and accurate and well articulated. Um, so that uh, good reporting by the project managers means that we have quality reporting by the PMO. What are the benefits of quality portfolio reporting? Well, with good information comes yeah. prompt decision making. Um, it provides visibility of the portfolio real time. So it, it, it gives people oh, the information that they need. And then it also um, creates credibility for the PMO and the organization. All right, so now that we understand the uh, why and the what, let's go look at the how. All right, so I mean, the how of data quality is not an open and shut question. OK, we've got the basic data quality uh, standard in PPO that we're going to go into now. But then there are ways that we can evolve data quality um, and nuance it, tweak it for your environment. And we're going to look at some uh, good examples later on. But I think firstly, you know, we need to get to the crux of, you know, how we do data quality out the box in PPO. 
So there are two key elements to data quality in PPO out the box, and those are using uh, health indicators and comments to communicate the status and the progress of our project to our stakeholders in our reports. If we think about a project status dashboard, you know, here I'm communicating um, about my project with my stakeholders using these two items. All right, so let's have a look at the health indicators first. OK, so the health indicators are a standard set of indicators that basically we use to break up the overall project health. So we've got our overall project health um, and that should actually be made up of the health of all these elements. So this very standard uh, example on PPO, we've broken that health into progress, cost, risks, risks, et cetera. And for each of those items, we want to give a rag and then some commentary um, around that rag. So this is a very standardized approach because it means that every project is going to be reporting on those same health indicators. Why is that important? If we look at the portfolio health dashboard and um, I come down to my projects in execution, I can immediately pick up this trend that we're running into trouble on our costs on almost all our projects in execution. You know, getting an idea of this means that, you know, decisions can be made, problems can be solved um, across the portfolio when we see those trends. So everybody is reporting on the same items that are important to our PMO. Now, it is important to keep in mind that you can customize these. You can add or remove health indicators um, so that your health indicators are relevant to your environment. There might be indicators um, that are more meaningful to you. For example, having an indicator for procurement or resources um, to even have a indicator for change management. I'm seeing that more and more so that we can track those important elements in our project. Our health indicators should also talk to the items further down on our dashboard, things like risks. Um, you know, if our risk indicator here is green, when I scroll down to my risks further below, oops, I look at this and I go, hang on a second, um, you know, there's a red and an amber risk. So my health indicator is not quite speaking to the reality of the data below. So that's just something else uh, to keep in mind. Another thing that is um, uh, good to keep in mind with health indicators is that you are actually able to um, then go and add things like a guideline for your project managers to help them determine their rags. So there is a field on the health indicator where you could go and add a description or a service level um, to help the PMs determine whether this should be green or amber or red. And, you know, these guidelines should be very specific to the actual health indicator, not just something in general. Um, and we can definitely help you with that. So you can always contact us. It's something that can, uh, once you've determined what those guidelines are, we can always go and help you bulk load those onto your health indicators. So that's something to keep in mind. All right, the other thing, you know, like in that scenario where I showed you the risks, is that it is also possible to calculate your health indicators. So there is that option to have the subjective um, health indicator where somebody's using a set of guidelines to determine what it should be, or you could go and calculate those health indicators. So for example, you know, if there is a, a, a variance in your costs um, or in your progress or there's red risks, you know, PPO could then calculate that health indicator for you as opposed to the project manager going and determining those for themselves. It's important to keep in mind, though, that in that scenario, you, you can really only do that in a very mature environment. And it's where the project managers are really good at getting all the other 
data into PPO because if they're not importing their schedule regularly, if they're not updating their risk regularly um, and reevaluating the regs on there, um, then obviously, you know, when it comes to uh, calculating those health indicators, you might not get a very accurate view on how the project is doing. Now, just like the health indicators, the comments can also be customized. So uh, the PMO can determine a set of comments um, that are relevant in the environment. And these are set up um, again with the health indicators on the template project. So any new projects created would inherit those um, health indicators and comments. We are sharing some articles on you know, how you go adjusting those template projects. Um, but again, this is where you provide some commentary on your project, how it's progressing. Um, it's that written feedback, that narrative. It should be, you know, nice, short, sweet, to the point. It should not be a long essay. And keeping that in mind, your comments and your health indicators for the project managers uh, on the call, it shouldn't take you that long to update. Because as I say, we don't want a whole novel sitting in our general comments and issues. The details should be in our entities further down. All right, and then just on that uh, note with the project managers, um, you know, I find as a project manager, this really helps me go through my project methodically. It helps me evaluate what's going on. Um, when I make a rag red, I know that I'm going to get the support from um, my implementation manager, um, from the people that I'm working with on my project to help me uh, get things back in line. So don't be afraid of the reds, rather educate your stakeholders if they're wary of reds because reds are about getting that help. Another thing a lot of project managers kick back against is commenting for green. Why do you just want to comment on the bad in your project? What about blowing your own trumpet a little bit and commenting for the green? So use that uh, those updates to um, really um, evaluate where you at to really communicate what's going on, whether it's negative or positive. All right. Um, so let's get down to how does the actual calculation work in PPO? Um, so, I mean, we've talked about, you know, the health indicators and comments, but how do we actually go about now um, doing that calculation? So I'm going to go to a project. And I'm going to scroll down to the data quality section here so you can see my comments are updated, my health indicators not all updated, my data quality is red. So this is not very forgiving. It's a yes or no. So the yes here means that every single one of my comments has been updated within the agreed amount of time. Um, base PPO is seven days, um, but my health indicators haven't all been updated. This means my data quality is red. OK, so it's very unforgiving. Now let's see what happened here. I'm pretty sure I did all my updates but my health indicator updated reg is red. If I now scroll down to my health indicators, I can see here, yes, this morning I did some updates on my health indicators. Um, but if I look down here, I can see I missed one. So this last one, the last time it was updated was on the 7th of August. Um, and that is why my uh, data quality is red, because I missed that one. Now, um, one of the things you can do in your PMO, as I said, PPO's base is seven days. You can set your data quality to the frequency that is right for your PMO. So let's say your reporting cycle or your heartbeat is 30 days. You can go to into PPO and adjust that. Where do you do that? The PPO administrator has access to data fields. And very simply, you come and look at the three calculated fields in data quality. And in each one, you will simply go and click and change that seven to a 30. 
OK, when you do that, you will then update the frequency and the calculation will base it on a 30 day update uh, update cycle. Something to keep in mind, though, is that PPO also allows you to um, have different frequencies. So if you think about it, sometimes we have a BA Utah projects that maybe we only want to report on every 30 days. But then we've got some of our strategic projects that we really need that weekly update on. So there again, um, you know, the type of project, the size of project can be taken into account. And, you know, there again, our support desk can help you implement that, um, that frequency variation on your data quality. So a project would then show a reporting frequency and then um, the data quality would be based on that. We can then take that even a step further. All right. So um, one of the things that you will be able to do is to say, all right, um, per health indicator, we could have different frequencies. Um, you know, per health indicator, depending on, you know, what the health indicator is. I'm just quickly changing my project. So in this instance, if you look at my health indicator list, we can see the update frequency, something like progress. I want updated every seven days. However, something like costs, you know, we're only going to update that every 30 days because, you know, our financials are only coming through uh, every 30 days. You know, it's maybe even scope and ben a scope might be a 30 days benefits. We might only relook at every 60 days. So you can actually go and do that update frequency per indicator. So that's also something else that you can reach out to our support desk or to your PPO success manager to help you um, set up that accordingly. Now, something else you might have noticed, and some of you have this and some of you don't, but we found another way to customize data quality was to say, all right, so how do we make it easier to see, um, you know, that updates need to be done? So we came up with this update in uh, overdue indicator that you can put on the health indicators and comments. And you can see that it's judging, you know, it's one day since my last update, which means my update is current. If I go back to my other project um, and we look at that, that problem one there, you can see my update is overdue and I can see it's 24 days since that last update. So this helps the project manager see very quickly where an update is required um, and where they've maybe missed doing an update. All right, so those are some small ways in which, you know, you can really enhance your data quality and the way data quality um, works in your organization. All right, um, so, I think the next thing we need to talk about is how does the PMO go about managing data quality, this basic data quality? Um, there are some standard reports in PPO to help you with this. And I'm just going to go show you, um, you know, which ones they are. So if we go to reporting and we go to the project report category, we've got the data completeness report. So this report looks at our comments and our health indicators. It also looks at all of our other entities to say, have I got at least one task, one issue, one risk, one document, one cost on my project? Um, and you can then see. <clears throat> uh, sorry, there's some feedback coming through. Please just make sure you're on mute. Um, so you can very quickly see where data is missing on a project here. OK, so that's one of the reports. Another one that you can look at is your portfolio quality report. Um, and here you can again see there's your project health and there's your data quality rate. So the PMO can use these types of reports to very quickly um, ascertain the level of data quality in the portfolio. 
so those are just some of the the reports you can even go to an individual project quality report um to see how that data quality is broken up so if there was a red rag to see which one is red okay so those are just some of the basic reports that you can use now let's see if we take uh, data quality a level up just one little step up what are some of the things that you can start looking at <clears throat> to um, increase um, your items that you are tracking in terms of data quality. So I'm going to start here. One of the things we have seen before is where a PMO goes and adds an approved budget to the projects manually. Um, the project managers then need to go and update the cost records with their budgets. And we pop in a budget control to make sure that the costs are then going to align with that approved budget that was originally loaded on the project. So that is a data control um, mechanism or a data quality control mechanism that can be very easily put in place. Um, some additional things to think about is number of days uh, since last uh, project status dashboard was uploaded to PPO. One of the practices we generally encourage is for project managers to generate the project status dashboard and upload it as a document in PPO for that weekly snapshot. Um, it's also a way of publishing it to your team and stakeholders that have access to PPO. So if I'm on a weekly cycle, 23 days is way too long to not have published my dashboard. OK, another thing is to check the uh, quality of the schedules, for example. So has a schedule been uploaded? Is there a project task in the schedule and are there milestones? And this all speaks to increasing the, the maturity of our scheduling in the in the PMO. Um, this is also quite important for some of our portfolio reporting where you've got portfolio timelines that show, you know, that project task, that beginning to end, and then the milestones in between. Okay, so those are just some very basic ones that you can very uh, implement very easily. And then those can be added to your data completeness or, or portfolio quality reports so that you can track them all in one place across the projects. All right, so now I want to show you some of the slightly more exciting stuff that we've been doing for some of our clients. And for that, I'm actually going to take you to the monitoring dashboard. And I'm conscious of the time. Let's just go there. All right. So here is our monitoring dashboard. Now, um, many of you will be familiar with the PPO monitoring dashboard. Um, a lot of the time we use this to monitor usage uh, during implementation. So as we're getting new users onto PPO, we're tracking their logins, we're tracking the number of hits, uh, we're tracking their base data quality, their governance, if we're doing a cycle on governance and documents. So, you know, we generally use this as we're implementing uh, on a new implementation. However, this is also very useful if you have decided to include a new capability into your PPO. Um, so to track that new capability, if you are changing your ways of work um, in PPO, you know, again, another way to monitor that everybody is managing OK, doing OK, and so that you can facilitate where guys are falling behind. So a lot of you will be familiar with these top key statistics. But now we're going to take it a little bit further. Um, so one of our clients has this EPMO scorecard and what they do is that they basically tracking all the projects to make sure, you know, who's compliant, how many projects are baselined, how many of the projects have got a budget, how many have got measurable benefits, um, and then it's taking an average of that so that it's the EPMO is actually scoring itself in terms of compliance across the board. This client also does, um, you know, these uh, net promoter scores. So they run surveys with stakeholders to see how the EPMO is doing in the organization. And again, this is another way of tracking the quality of the work coming out of the PMO. 
These are based uh, data completeness that we've all seen before. So that data completeness report I showed you. This is just showing that percentage and this is what you want to see, you know, in, in a situation like an implementation. Um, you know, we you want to see the data getting onto PPO. Now here's the standard P, uh, data quality reg. So this is a graph showing our data quality. However, again, for this client, we had to do something slightly different. So in this scenario, we had a situation where some of the health indicators were updated by the project managers. However, there were indicators being updated by the business analyst too. So it seemed more fair to split up that data quality between the different types of users to show, you know, where the pitfalls were. So we actually split the data quality between these two groups. Another area this works really well in is if you have change managers updating the change health indicator. So they come on to PMO, it's their responsibility to keep that indicator updated. So, you know, there you want to be, um, you know, keeping an eye on their data quality separately to the project managers. So that's one of the ways where we've taken standard PPO data quality and tweaked it a little bit. All right, if you remember that little rag on the project, projects with a schedule, has a schedule been imported? So this little story um, starts at a big mining company where there was uh, our implementation was happening at the same time as a huge program. And what we found was we had a lot of project managers that weren't actually project managers. They were stream leads, they were business people. Uh, you can imagine for somebody in that position, firstly getting to grips with Microsoft Project and then now a, a project management tool. So to track that they were getting their schedules into PPO, you know, we put in this, this indicator to say, you know, is there a schedule on the project or not? Now, this is not about using a stick, especially when, you know, accidental project managers are are in play. You know, this is about identifying, OK, who needs that little bit of help? Who needs assistance and facilitation with getting the information into PPO? So that was where we first started using this and now use it a little bit more broadly. All right, so let's imagine we've got our schedules in PPO. We need to make sure that those have been updated. Now, the first time I used this as a, a monitoring device or a data quality device was with a team who uh, run very fast projects. They fit our team, they fit out shops and businesses. So their projects run very quickly. They've got a very set standard um, list of tasks. And depending on the type of situation it is, so imagine the difference between setting up a kiosk in a shopping center or setting up a huge big new Woolworths, right? So the projects, um, they are different types and they have these set schedules. Now, because they had those set schedules, we were generating those automatically in PPO using a template project. But we needed the PMs to go in and track their progress. It's all fine and well, the schedule's there, but we need to know how far we're we going. What is our actual progress looking like? So on their monitoring, I put this in as a data quality measure to say, all right, so how are we going? Obviously, there's always going to be projects running behind, but there is a certain tolerance in the PMO for that you know your project and you know sort of where the boundaries are. So is it OK that it's 10 percent behind? Is it OK that it's 15 percent behind? But what we did find was that the schedule variance was larger when the schedules weren't being updated with progress. So this showed us immediately, you know, where we needed to encourage the guys to go in, update their, their progress so that that information was actually um, accurate and up to date for, for reporting. All right, um, also with the budgets. So in a situation where we're loading budgets for the first time in PPO, maybe they've been managed elsewhere before, we're now managing them in PPO. For our portfolio reporting, when it comes to financials to be correct, we wanna make sure that all the budgets are in PPO. So what we did here was um, we split this into three. Green means 
there's a budget on the project. Red, we're missing a budget. The gray is for projects that are not yet at a stage where they need a budget. So this was a way to say, OK, we're excluding certain projects because we don't want to frustrate um, you know, the project manager that he's getting into trouble for a red um, because his project actually is still in you know, initiation. So he hasn't quite got his budget yet. So that's another way that we've split it up. Now, things like benefits and lessons are sometimes a bit tricky to get the data load in. Um, it's one of those things that we often find lag. So here again, you know, with a PMO that now wants to up its maturity level. So we want to start tracking benefits, um, having measurable benefits loaded in PPO, start tracking lessons and lessons learned. You know, that that's where we on our maturity journey, let's track what's happening there. You know, this was also a way for us to track it again using the gray to say, well, there's certain projects that won't have yet or or that won't ever have, and those would then be grey. But this was a way of tracking the data quality and that the data had in fact been put into PPO. And there's your, your lessons learnt as well. And in fact, here we, we actually split them. This was just a count, but it was between what could we do better and what went well. So also encouraging the PMs to start loading lessons early in the project, not just you know, right before that closure meeting when you want something, trying to think of some lessons to add to your closure report so you can get it signed off. Let's get the lessons in as we go. And let's not just focus on what went wrong. Let's also say, what did we actually do right? What should we do in future again? So encouraging that kind of thinking around lessons learned. Again, improving the quality of our data on PPO. Now, when it came to um, RAID items, we normally start with accounts, how many risks have been loaded, how many issues, how many actions. But very quickly, we surpass that in maturity with outlines. Towards the end of the implementation, we've got them all there. We've got the full RAID log on PPO. Um, it's no longer relevant. But what we do need to track is how are we managing those risks? Because it's all fine and well that Bron goes and does a nice big bulk load for us of all our risks. but then. Are we going to manage them after that? All right. So what this does is it looks at the follow up dates. And if you've gone over the follow up date and you haven't updated your risk and changed that follow up date, well, guess what? It's overdue. And, you know, this shows us very quickly where risks or issues or actions are not being managed when they're sitting in that overdue status. Um, so we never want to see a huge portion of them in the red. We want to see them green and tracking. All right, something that I was asked recently by one of my clients in the UK was, all right, so now we've gotten past that stage, we are updating our risks, we are sticking to the follow up dates. But what's bothering me now is that we've got some risks that are like 250 days old. By this stage, they should be mitigated, accepted, closed off. So can we track the age, the average age of risks on PPO? And so this was something um, that I've just started working on, actually. But what I did was I split the graph between our green, amber and red risks in terms of their risk rating so that we get that clear view of the number of days um, they've been around. And, you know, we don't want the red risks sitting uh, around too long. So that could get a little bit concerning. All right, other things that we uh, encourage you to measure data quality on is timesheets. Um, if you're implementing timesheets, it's always important to keep an eye on that data quality. It's not always the people who are not capturing their time and missing time. It could also be the approver that's the bottleneck, so all those timesheets sitting with an approver. Um, so this is why we have the red, amber, and green here. The amber mean that meaning that the timesheets are sitting with the approver. So this is just to check the flow of that timesheet process and to make sure people are capturing. We also have a lot of great reporting on PPO, you know, standard reporting to, to help you with your timesheets analysis. But it's something that it's very important to track that because generally time is money. That's why we're tracking the time, right? So we want to make sure that everyone's doing what they should be. 
Okay, then um, another area that seems to be coming a little bit more and more prolific with our clients is demand management. And, you know, with very simple key statistics on your monitoring, you can measure, you know, how demands are flowing through PPO if they're just getting stuck and left to die a slow death once they're added to PPO. This is also about uh, creating that credibility with the organization. You know, they're putting our demands or ideas into, into the system and they're sitting there and they not nothing's happening with them. So this is a good way for the PMO to also measure themselves to make sure that they are keeping on track with going through that process. We don't want to see turnaround time on demands getting too high. So that's another area that's, uh, you know, quite good to track the, the quality of the data. One last thing that I want to show you is um, what we did for a client who put in place a lot of this monitoring. Um, and what they decided to do was actually start using this as a way to measure the uh, project managers and create a project manager scorecard. So per project manager, you know, creating that scorecard um, you know, to see how they're doing in terms of looking after their projects and their data on PPO. So metrics like, you know, how long it took them to complete closure, um, you know, projects on track, um, you know, if they were doing all these steering committee meetings and adding their minutes to PPO, um, you know, if they were doing their weekly project reporting. So you can see then, you know, and that information was then based on a lot of those scorecard metrics that um, I've shown you um, to, to actually calculate how the project managers were doing. And this is actually quite nice because, um, you know, it's measurable, you know, it's stuff you can measure um, fairly. And this can also be used for contractors, vendors, you know, you can think about all sorts of scenarios where you want to measure the quality of work being done, the quality of the data. All right, so I had to kind of rush through that last little bit. Uh, we've uh, I've taken up quite a lot of time. I was hoping that there might be some questions from you all, but before we do those questions, Taryn's going to um, run a poll for us, and I want to talk to the fact, you know, um, if you can answer the poll saying, you know, do you think your PMO is ready to up your data quality to evolve it? Um, so if you don't mind answering that poll for me, and then we will open up for questions and I'm going to stop sharing. So do you feel your PMO is ready to take data quality to the next level, like some of the examples I've shown you? Um, yes, no, maybe. It will be interesting to hear from you. We're seeing some good responses here, Brian. It seems okay, like 65%, 61 feels as if they're ready to do that. Some not so sure, maybe. 21% have said yeah. maybe. Okay, great. All right, so it's one of those things that, you know, you can use on your maturity journey. As I said earlier, it's also very useful for you introducing new stuff um, on PPO. Um, that you want to record. Um, and and then just the doing. final uh, 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 area where you can capture those requirements that you waited for before the scheme goes live. At the moment, if I understand you. <laughs> I thought that was a question. I was getting really concerned. It seemed very complicated. OK, <laughs> great. <laughs> All right. So, Taryn, have there been any questions in the chat that I need to address? I uh, haven't seen any yet, Bron. Um, no questions on the side. No questions on the side. Okay. Does anyone have any questions at that you want to ask? The floor is open. Or any examples that they'd love to share? Um, that maybe one that we haven't touched on. Okay, I see a hand up, Bongi. Yes, you can go for it. Hi, thank you very much for the interesting um, presentation on data quality. 
Um, I just want to check when we have a risk um, and a risk becomes an issue, then which means I must now deal with it as an issue. Do I still continue with it on both under risk as well as under the, the issues or I must close it under the risk and continue with it under the issues? So Bongi, um, in my mind, you know, once a risk um, has occurred, that's when it becomes an issue. And in my mind, I would say you should be closing out the risk because you are now managing that that particular thing as an issue. So I don't see why you should be managing it in, in two places. It's no longer a risk because it's actually happened. Um, so in that case, I would definitely close off the risk and then continue to manage it as an issue. What we've also done, Bongi, and what you can do as well, you can automate that. So um, you, there's a mechanism for you to set the risk as realized. And based on the fact that the risk is realized, PPO will automatically create that issue for you and carry over some of the, that key data so you don't lose the history and the background. So something like the title, um, the description of it would all pull through into the newly created issue. And then it does save the project manager time on in terms of having to recreate it. So if that's something that you're interested in, that's definitely something that can be set up and either your success manager can set it up for you or you can log a ticket with the support desk. No, th no thank you very much. I think that the last ones for me, I'm just going to so that maybe can summarize. The, there are two areas that I wanted to actually check. Um, on the risk, uh, we actually enter the risk and we go to the reg side and assume that it is with controls, which means that you've put controls in place. Um, I just want to be sure that my assumption is correct, that I'm not looking at a risk before the controls are in place when I actually start to rate that particular risk in terms of, it, in terms of its uh, uh, impact. And and the last one, uh, I would still maybe we'll do it outside here. Yeah? I'd still like to see how the end value management. Although I did see you doing a, sh a schedule variance, I would still want to see how I'll implement an end value um, a, a, a management in terms of uh, managing my time, managing my budget as as well as the fiscal progress. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Bongi. I did see another hand up. But I think the hand went down again. Um, yeah, I just wanted to actually say that um, in our case, you had done that automation for us. So we were able to convert from risk straight into issue, but you covered it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Anybody else with any questions? So please, I want to encourage you, um, you know, and for the uh, success managers from PPO that are on the call um, for the clients, you know, maybe make this your, one of your agenda items for the next time you you get together and, and have a check in with each other, you know, to see um, how you can improve this and make it work for you. Because I think a lot of our clients very quickly outgrow that base um, data quality. Um, and you know need to refine that a little bit so you know please make make that an agenda item so that um you know you can you can increase um your maturity along the way as well any other questions all right so before we go also uh Taryn's just going to share a poll where uh you can rate this webinar um Thank you very much for for joining our webinar today. I hope you have learned something. I hope it wasn't um, too much of stuff, too many things you already knew, but that you actually got to learn some new things. Um, but yeah, please rate the webinar. Um, take notes of our future webinars. The pack that Taryn will send has got uh, the details there. There's also um, a list of all the resources that were shared within the chat. So the articles in PPO that were relevant to the different parts um, of this talk. So you will have those um, 
that you'll be able to access um, plus the recording. Great, thanks so much, Bron, for um, taking yeah, sure. us through data quality and thank you all for joining. If we don't have any other questions, then um, thanks everyone. We'll see you at the next webinar, which is focusing on what makes a world class PMO. And that will be presented by Americo Pinto from the PMO Global Alliance. So thanks so much. Thanks everyone.